Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Will the Collector finally back here with another video review. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, boys and girls of Middle Ages, um, I apologize. It has been a while and the videos are uh, have been a little sparse. Um, I've been taking some extra classes and stuff like that for my job, um, vacations and family events, so on and so forth. And I just turned 40, ladies and gentlemen. And because I turned 40, I was like, you know what? I've done a couple things on this channel. I've reviewed G.I. Joes, Transformers, Marvel Legends, DC characters, uh, specifically uh, collectibles, which is no longer a company, but I've reviewed them. Um, I haven't quite done a Lego yet, even though that is on the docket, but I figured those are going to be build videos. Some upgrade kits, some Mythic Legions, some Jazzwares Halo figures, but I wanted to review some Predators. So, for the next couple reviews, I'm catching up. I have got a metric ton of stuff to look at, review. Every time I get a new figure now, I'm like, ah, I gotta review it, gotta give people something. You know, I, I want to tell you why I bought this figure, and the main reason why I bought Specifically, this guy, which is the Ultimate Scout Predator from NECA, is because, for some odd reason, when I got into the Predators, I've always loved Predators. Um, I remember watching the first one, I want to say it was in 89? I have to think of when the first movie came out. I think it was like, what, 87, somewhere around there? I could be way off on that. If, if I am, please correct me in the comments. But I was just automatically incensed with this alien character this uh ultimate hunter that i was just i was hooked i was hooked and then the second one came out in what 91 i want to say it was and i didn't get a theater to see it because i was um, i want to say i was about nine or probably about nine years old and my mother surely wasn't going to take me to go see it so i waited and i watched it on on video yes kids video look it up um, of course, who am I talking about? My demographic has probably been around since VHS was a thing. Um, but I finally watched Predator 2, and I tell you, I got to that end scene after, oh, spoiler alert, and by God, if you haven't seen Predator 2 by now, I'm sorry. But when, when, uh, Hardigan, played by Danny Glover, uh, finally slays our, our city hunter Predator, and he's in the ship, and, you know, you're thinking, oh, all is done, and all of a sudden... The Lost Tribe shows up. And that's where all these guys were. And, you know, uh, so when NECA got the license and they were doing the Predator figures, I don't know why I was absent from getting Predators. My first Predators were actually McFarlane ones. And then I got the Predator 1, Predator the Jungle Hunter, and I think Dutch is when I was walking through Toys R Us and happened to see those. And that was my first time getting back in the line. And I have been hooked ever since. But anyways, long story short, here is the Ultimate Scout Predator in its uh, box right here. Beautiful artwork right here on the front. Uh, looks like he's near a Yutani building. Looks like, uh, is this Japan? I hope so. If not, I'm sorry. But uh, it's got that nice Predator 2 uh Logo right there, Ultimate Scout Predator over here to the side of the box. It's got the 30th anniversary. That's why we're getting these figures. Um, they decided to release them in that new Ultimate, uh, under that Ultimate banner, and give them that new body style that they've done with the diaphragm joint, double jointed elbows, double. Jo I mean, just the, all the bells and whistles. And here's all the Predators that we're going to be getting. And on the back, there's a bio. <laughs> yes, this is what I love the most. Okay, so it says, Scout Predator, born on a harsh, isolated island. Scout descends from a rare subspecies of Yaucha, if I pronounce that wrong, I apologize, Prime. Uh, the island is known for breeding unique hunters who've become specialized in stealth and long-range kills as a means of surviving the dangerous wildlife. Highly trained in using custom-built plasma rifles, Scout is a master of pre precision as well as an expert in reconnaissance and strategic observation. As part of Greyback's Lost Tribe, Greyback's Lost Tribe, he mainly is tasked with determining secondary targets from a distance to allow 
the rest of the group to focus on the primary target. At the same time, he continually watches for potential dangers. Long-range weapons are usually considered dishonorable in Yauchich culture. However, since Scout only uses plasma rifles of his design and build, he's allowed to participate in hunts in this capacity on the condition that he does not kill any primary targets. Interesting. Serving as both strategic and protector, Scout is a hunter of rare skill contributing significantly to the Lost Tribe's legendary success in ways that are commonly overlooked. A bio, yes. And that tells me, um, I've hopped on a couple YouTube channels and stuff like that, uh, that tells me, you know, why this character is there. Why does he have a long rifle when, why do Predators have a long rifle, period? Because you've always known him to have the shoulder cannon. But here it is. Uh, along the side of the box right here, after you see a couple images of the Predator, which, gosh, I hope I can get that pose going on, is you get a lot of the, and I'm going to zoom in real here, here real quick. I wonder if you wanted to pause on that bio, do so now. But you get the other uh, Predators that are going to be within this uh, wave of figures. And I think I've got all the way down to these so far. Um, I'm trying to remember that I know there's a shaman, the boar, the snake, or is that the snake? Uh, there's a couple and I've pieced together and I was able to get a couple of these. I've got the board predator or the armored predator. I've got guardian sitting right next to me. Actually, I think what was his name? That is stalker. I guess stalker predator is the next one I have down the way. But these you can order through uh, Big Bad Toy Store, um, pre-order right now, or you can get them uh, when they show up at Target or Walmart. But to open up, and they've got a nice Velcroed front flap to open up the box and see the character all there within. Uh, there he is in his beautiful vest. You know what will really just make my millennium is if they release, re-release the trophy wall, because I have all the skulls. Randy, if you're listening, which I highly doubt it, Please re-release that damn thing. It is really expensive, and I'd really like to have it. Anyways, there he is in the window box packaging. Uh, you get a crap ton of accessories. You get the figure, the head, the new uh, rifle that he has. Looks like another weapon that he's got. Uh, his uh, shoulder plasma cannon. Looks like he's got a wrist cannon. All that other stuff. And I know what you're thinking. What? Well, this guy looks like the Predator 1. Well, yes. That's what they did. So they took a lot of, they took a handful of other actors uh, that are very tall. I, I want to say that some of them were NBA players because the gentleman that played the Predator, uh, was it Kevin Peter Hall, was a very tall man. I mean, that dude was tall. And so they got some NBA players to fill in those costumes and they kind of, you know, I think it was a lot of the uh, sculptors, I want to say at... Um, um, of course, my mind's going blank right now. Uh, Stan Winston, Stan Winston uh, Creations. I think a lot of those guys were like, hey, let's come up with different things. And somebody happened to have the uh, the older Predator helmet and boom, threw it on there. So there it is. That's probably why, because he's got the older helmet, but yet he's got the newer armor. Anyway, I could be wrong on that, but I, I think that's what I have correctly read. I'm going to pause the video, get this man out of his, or this alien out of his plastic and cardboard prison i'll be right back with you hold on all right ladies and gentlemen and we're back and he's all out of the package and of course like i normally am with a NECA figure i'm always on pins and needles on whether or not something's going to break i'm fingers crossed his left knee upper knee either that pin broke or it just wasn't in all the way as I zoom in right there, it's going to be difficult to see, but you see how it's kind of shallow, or it's kind of, you can see all the way through that compared to the pin being right there. So, as I was trying to get this knee, part of the knee uh, joint free, that kind of, I heard like a small pop. Oh, gosh. So, but it didn't look like it was all the way through initially, so I'm going to heat that up and try to... Um, get that uh, working again. If not, I'll be contacting NECA on their Twitter page and uh, 
hopefully somebody responds and maybe they'll send me another leg or something like that. I don't know, but we'll see how that goes. But there he is out of his package. And like anything else, any other predator figure, they do not fail to uh, just amaze and awe me. Just to go over accessories real quick. He comes with an extra head, which man, that is definitely the face uh, only a mother could love. A uh, very uh, pronounced uh, tendrils and lower jaw, almost crab-like. I mean, just wow. Because that was the thing. Because you didn't see this guy without his helmet on. He didn't take his mask off. So that's where Falk and the gang have come up with the way these things are going to look, I guess. Or, you know, I don't know if there was some concept art that they took. And they are like, well, we'll run with that. I don't know. I'm pretty sure there's an interview with Randy out there that talks about that. He comes with his uh, staff, which uh, these things are very easily broken. Uh, they're awesome, but um, I hate them all in the same token. Here's his uh, staff all closed up, which is cool. He comes with a, a blast effect, which is always, always lovely to get. I love that they started doing these and including these with the figures. And that will just fit over his uh, shoulder cannon right there. There we go. Uh, he comes with some add-on pieces, but I will I will address those right at the end because I'm going to uh, talk about them and then put them on. He comes with his long-range plasma rifle. And that's got some very thin pieces right there. But that is a very nice piece. It, uh, it gives you like a, that almost... That, that kind of explains uh, the face a little bit. It almost gives it a shell feel to me. I mean, it's alien, but it also feels like it's... Oh, wow, that kind of goes in and out. That's, oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's cool. Uh, it gives it that sea-bearing feel, if that makes sense. You know, like if Pirates of the Caribbean had invented a long-range rifle and made it alien, there it is. That's pretty cool. And then I guess this right here is just the uh, the shortened up version of it. Wherever it's going to sit. I'm assuming there's a place on him. Hopefully it'll sit. We've got a couple of discs, which were the coolest thing. Uh, one of his new armaments out of Predator 2 that I thought was just the neatest darn thing with these discs. Let me, where's my picture at? Let me bring these up. So we have one open and one closed. And those usually... Fit in one of the open hands. You know, that's closed. That'll fit in his uh, right thigh there, and there's the back side of it. Pretty darn cool, if you ask me. I've always liked those things. And he comes with some spare hands, which, you know, this one's for obviously holding his staff. This one's probably for holding the rifle, or this one might be also, you know. And these are... These are stiff hands, so if you want to get them, you're going to have to heat them up, flange them out, flail them out, you know. This is probably definitely for holding the rifle, which I will probably heat up off camera and do that because i got to fix them too. But put, kind of push that off to the side. We get these two pieces. And I know this one to be a wrist blaster that we saw the Predator have towards the end of the second movie after Keys came, I think Keys came in or no, it was after uh, Hardigan um, shot him up a couple times after he, Keys and his crew got um, taken out because I think the shoulder cannon was damaged. So it showed him. Pop this thing up, and I've noticed that it fits on right here on his left forearm. And it's got a little rectangular key there. You can put that on. And that's that's in case it's just going to sit there, but I plan on it just sitting there. And then this piece, I think... If I'm not mistaken, yeah, this is the medical kit. This is the medical kit I want to say both Predators have used. I don't think there's much difference in it. 
because you can also see right here is where his thumb would go down and deploy the medical kit. And that looks like it is notched right here for his back. If you move the tendril hair out of the way, there we go. That's cool. And he's got another little rectangular notch right there. Just going to see if this mounted anywhere with everything all folded up. Now that could be a C-ring that was supposed to be included because sometimes the they'll have a C-clip for the for the staff. They might not have included that. I'm just trying to think of where I can mount his rifle at. It's not looking like he's got something. But anyway, to real quickly go over his articulation, he's got hinge and swivel shoulders and some of his arm arm um, shoulder armor is flexible and attached here to the bicep at least here on the left shoulder so it can kind of move around and that i'm just gonna leave that off for right now swivel at the bicep double jointed elbow oh gosh necker you're killing me and as i gingerly mess with the uh forearm swivel he's got his little uh this little uh, computer there to um, chicken out and blow everything up. And that's always on a thin pin. I, I really wish this was like two separate pieces and one could pop out and one could pop in. I know their price and all that other stuff, but those thin pins are just, oh. Anyways, he got his hand, which is on a ball joint, or his wrist. It's got a ball joint and swivel because it's got a pin in there. And he's got his diaphragm joint, which is nice and tight. I'm not messing with it that much. He's got a waist joint, waist swivel. Come down to the hips, pinned hips, a nice swivel, and double jointed knee. And then a ball jointed ankle. But, you know, always looking at these guys. I mean, just, oh. The detail that they've done, because they have like a mesh body suit looking thing that all, comes all the way down. They've sculpted that in nicely. The paints always look nice and worn and dark. You know, I've just, you know, QC issues aside. Let's see. Yeah, the head pops off really easy. Just a pin right there. I say that, you know, let's put his other head on real quick. To me... And this is the question I ask. If you, any Predator fans out there, what do you display? Given an alternate head, given an unmasked head, unhelmeted head, which do you display? Do you go with masked or unmasked? To me, given the choice... That's my shelf right there. Most of mine are going to have their masks on. Because I always think the masks are cool. Unless that character is designed without one. I'm curious of when they get to, I think it's uh, Shaman. I know the Elder Predator, the Elder, he doesn't come with one. Um, but they'll probably make an alternate one for him, which will be cool. So... Yeah, it just nicely just fit on there. Oh, as much as I love this line, I am just always, always on pins and needles when it comes to their articulation. I mean, they look phenomenal. They always do. And he comes with his uh, little arm blades right there. And they've got some blood on them. Looks like he took somebody else out as he was walking into the ship. Or that's old blood. And real quickly, do a comparison. Here is the original scout that I had. You know, so move his accessories off to the side here. You know, uh, a little bit lighter. Uh, this one looks, you know, a little bit more wet. If that makes sense. And this one's a little bit drier. I do like his paint scheme a little bit more on this one. He's got a little bit more reds 
going on. Helmet's a little bit more dirtier. You know, you see that med kit on the back. Pretty much the same. They've just updated the sculpts a little bit. But pretty much the same. Let's see if I can get that to look like that's supposed to tuck in there. Take this blade. Now these these things never pop in, right? At least mine haven't. You can just kind of see where they line up here and here to try to get that blade in there. I could probably heat it up with a hair dryer. And then pop it in and hopefully it stays a lot better than this. It's supposed to it looks like it should go like completely around it. And that's staying so far for the most part, which is cool. Let's see if this is the hand for the open part. No, those fingers are a little bit too far apart. Oh, oh this one's going to be it. Yeah, this one should be it. Yep. See, there you go. Oh. Oh, always stressful. And of course, with these blades sitting right here, that'd be cool if these things could pop out like some of them have, and you just swap in and then just pop the blades back on. You know, heats to the heat to the the. Yeah, I think I'll, well, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop that pop it back off because I want him holding the holding the rifle if I can get it that way. Let's see, that's going to be his opposite hand. That's definitely going to be the, the gun gripping hand. Uh, yeah. I'm going to pause this real quick, go heat it up. And we're back, boys and girls. Okay, so, turns out I did uh, pop the pin in that knee. So I'm going to take a photograph of that and contact NECA and see if they can send me another leg or what. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> another thing. A little piece of advice, when you're heating up the socket, not the pin, don't heat up the pin um, because this will become very flexible really fast. These things, these hands, they take less than a minute, less than 30 seconds of heat on a low setting to get nice, gummy, and pliable. You heat up this pin and try to jam it in there, you're going to bend it and you're going to break it. And I don't want that to happen to anybody. But the other thing to note, when you are heating up these blades or anywhere near these blades, shouldn't be heating up these blades at all. But if you heat up this joint near these blades, they will flex on you and they will, they will cool quicker than anything else and they will be misshapen. As you can already see, these have become misshapen than they initially were. So, yeah, be mindful and be careful of that. But, you know, got uh, got the weapon in the hand. Um, let's see. You could probably swap out with this hand, you know, heat that up. I'm not doing any more with that because I'm going to have him like this if I get him some good real estate on the shelf. Uh, it's probably going to be in the back, but I definitely want to show off, you know, him having this weapon, he might be standing there like this, you know, but that's, that's not a, I wouldn't think that would be a predator style, um, of hold. I don't you know, I mean, anything they pick up, they've probably seen from whatever we've done as I try to find a good position for this. Again, those claws, I wish they were removable. I wish he didn't even come with the blades on this one, on this one, um, just because of what he's holding and it doesn't quite pull it off the best. But, 
again i'll mess with him some more uh and uh hopefully get him kind of fixed and go from there um again uh can't wait to complete the rest of this line i've got four of the line already and from the back of the packaging it looks like we're getting one two three four five six seven eight nine so it looks like i'm just under halfway there of getting the rest of the lost tribe again uh, when I started getting back into collecting predators, um, I missed out on a lot of the Lost Tribe, which they did, um, all of them. And this was back in 2011, 2012, somewhere around there. Anyways, I have been Will the Collector. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Like I said, what do you prefer? Masked or unmasked? Let me know in the comments. Uh, take care of one another. And I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.